and Jimmy had some uh, interesting things that were associated with how he turns uh, uh, pepper mills. And so I'd ask him to uh, come over and, and, and show us uh, all of his techniques. Uh, uh, I was impressed when he said that everything is done on the lathe. He, he turns it, he finishes it, he sands it, everything's done, he takes it apart and, and then puts Put the pieces together and it's done. So. Uh, uh, we're uh, we're very happy to have him, uh, Dr. Jimmy Gill. Thank uh, you. Uh, well, you're retired. I can't seem to get retired yet from veterinary work. <laughs> uh, thank you for asking me. Uh, I have a PP Power presentation. If we can get it to get off on the flash drive over here, for some reason it doesn't want to transfer. So we'll work from here on that end of it. I'll go ahead and start see if they can get it done. Uh, I'm out eight years in turning. What you got? Oh, hooked around there. Uh, like I said, I'm veterinary. I decided, well, I'm going to retire. And so what I was doing, I couldn't do if I retired. So built me a wood shop. Uh, went over to Rockler's on Christmas Eve. They had a special on. So wife and I had already agreed we'd just buy one piece a month. <laughs> and so... Uh, Rockler's had Christmas, and if you bought this piece, you got $100 off. If you bought another piece, you got $100 off another piece. So she wasn't with me, so anyway, <laughs> I bought the whole shop. And uh, so she went with me to pick it up, and uh, I backed the trailer around behind Rockler's, and they opened up these heavy metal storage bins and started wheeling out this. And, of course, she kept saying, what's that? What's that? What's that? I said, well, that's part of the equipment. That's part of the equipment. So, uh, you bought the whole thing? So, uh, I didn't get whipped, but anyway, uh, I set up the whole shop. And then I went to Ace Hardware down the street because we go there. I'm off on Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. So, I went down usually. And I was talking to the guy there. And Dan, I was telling him about wood shop. And he said, well, there's a guy comes in here all the time that turns and so I said well when he comes in next time have him holler or come down to the office so one Saturday morning Wayne Clara walked in and said Dan from the Ace Hardware said you was interested and turn I said well yeah so Saturday afternoon we went down and we turned the bowl and so then I turned the bowl and then after our several sessions he was turning a pepper mill and so I turned me a pepper mill so then I got my catalog out and I ordered me 12 pepper mill kits and so I've been turning pepper mills every time. Uh, so on starting in, uh, we started out turning pepper mill. And so I turned this and, and drilled it. And so the typical, you tend it on both ends, and then you put it in, you cut off your top. And being an Aggie, I said, that's a lot of extra work. So I went and bought me a spade drill. And I drilled me a hole. And then I looked at it, and so and behold, it comes off the other end. And I said, well, it's the flexible in that thing made it turn. So I went down, and I bought me a drill drill. And I turned it slow. And then I turned, I said, well, we'll just turn it on what is there. And so I turned it, and then I looked at it. And it didn't make a bit of difference. So I told Wayne about it, and he said, well, that's why you turn tendons on both ends. That way you drill from one end and you drill the other end. And so I said, okay. So I learned, even though being an Aggie, that if you pay attention to these old timers, like Wayne, John Horn, some of these others, that they've gone through the school of hard knocks. And so if I want to go through it, I mean, you can. And so I said, well, I'll listen to me about pay attention to what he's telling me. Do it the way he told me to do it. And it ought to work. And so it does. So in the process of our club meetings, we had uh, a presenter that turned off-center turnings for a lidded box. I said, I can do that. So I went to the shop, and I turned me an off-center, 120-degree pepper mill. And then uh, we had a, another presenter, and he turned candlesticks, but he used barley twists. So I said, hey, I can do that on my pepper mill. 
So I went home and I turned me a peppermint. The problem was this end and this end turned fine in about 45 minutes. It took me four hours to cut that thing out, and that will probably be the first and the last one, although the wife said, won't you make one go in the other direction? And so that is the barley twist. It's got a plastic sleeve. <laughs> and then we have one of our members, Max Taylor, brought one for demonstration, and he inlays the aluminum and stuff, and so I went over and sat on his hip pocket. And for the gentleman that mentioned earlier, this is the greatest thing about the wood turners. They share. If I want to learn something about veterinary medicine or new technique, I got to go somewhere to the seminar to pay two or three hundred dollars. All you got to do is tap these guys on the shoulder and say, "Hey, can I come over to your shop?" And because we have shops at ours on Wednesdays and Thursdays, we turn and everybody comes over. So this is an inlay on. Like that. And so this is an aluminum. And again, uh, if we get my slideshow showing, you'll see that I'm wearing gloves. Of course, it's cold. It, the problem we have is you get to the shop and it's 110, or you get to the shop and it's 32. And so I'm turning, but the brilliant thing about turning these with metal, aluminum is not magnetic. So if you get aluminum in your hand, the doctor's going to have a lot of fun digging it out, and you're not going to have much. So I wear gloves to keep the aluminum off, but we can pass that around, and that's what we have on those. There's a couple of those that we can start on the other. Well, either way. There are as many pepper mills as there are turners as far as design. You have some that will give you designing it all up, and scaling it out and putting it on and turning it just like you drew it. It doesn't ever happen. Uh, the wood's either got faults in it, it's got cracks, you've got to shift it around. Uh, you design as you go. And these are just some of the different pepper mills that you can turn with the design in the bottoms. You've got 10 each, 12 each. And then I'll come across, we had one of our club members demonstrate the little minis. Now if you'll notice on some of those, all the bottom is metal. That is pepper. There may be one, I don't think I got salt in those. But these uh, small ones have pepper and salt can be put in both of these because this is acrylic. If you put salt in the pepper mill, it will corrode. So that's the relationship on those. So we can this, and these are just different designs just to show you. Now, the thing about this one, it says four inches for your mechanism. It means four inches. <laughs> you don't have much adjustment on that one. If you can adjust on these, then you can take, well, and take your rod somewhere in here. Yeah. If this one comes up a little bit over, then you just put it in your vise and cut off that piece measuring that distance half of your threads. Now if you get over it, you put your top back in and redo your top instead of trying it. One other technique that well, I don't know whether we get slash old, but in laying out your pepper mill, we get 14 inches. Now if you got a 12 inch, they say give you one inch more. Well, I get another each because I part mine off. I don't turn that way. So then you got a half inch on the bottom. You mark that off. You come up nine and a quarter. You mark that off. You get your half inch tendon or spigot, and then you got the rest of it for your top. Well, instead of getting your tape measure out, if you'll take your make a template out of this. Just mark off nine and a half on this broad and just use that each time. You don't have to go find your tape measure because every time I want my tape measure, my grandkids have moved it or I can't find it or I left it somewhere else. So that helps just doing that on that end of it. Also, we had one, uh, he's here, uh, John Lorabout came to the shop and we turned inside out snowmen. I said, 
hey, I can do that on my pepper mills. So I turn one side inside out, and somewhere in my shop, there is another piece of this pepper mill. <laughs> and so uh, I haven't found it, and I haven't gone back to the drawing board and tried this again. So I don't... <laughs> <laughs> well, face shields are up. One other point, using CA glue, you have to sand this metal to start with, and CA glue, and this was a nice good pepper mill until it dropped, and it just came apart. So, use either Tybon or Gorilla glue, and also be sure and sand your aluminum if you're trying to make one of these so that your glue will stick. Otherwise, it's not going to do that. Yes. It holds better. It will hold it. Yes, sir. And it, over time, it hardens and it gets crystallized and it starts. Whoop! We're up. Okay. Uh, is this thing going to work? Who 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 who'd I point? Okay, uh, these are off of the uh, internet, and like I said, there is designs of every kind according to whoever the pepper mill maker is, and that's you. And so this just shows you what you can do. Okay. As far as the different types of pepper mills. Small, large, short. Oh, I got one here I want to show you. This is not mine, but this is Max Taylor's, one of our club members. And he made this, and I was coming up. He said, Well, take that with you and show them. He made this, he said, for a short arm waiter to, to, to use that for a salt and pepper mill. So that's the design there on that part. But these are just off the net showing what can be made. Equipment. Am I supposed to point that at you or this? Okay. Uh, these are catalogs you can order. There are as many types of mechanism for pepper mills as you want. You can get them where there's one end on salt on one end, pepper on the other end. You can get them all sizes. I get mine out of Packard. Uh, basically, Max put me on, said, hey, Packard is all their product is U.S. made, so I try and help jobs in U.S. So you can pick out whatever you want, whoever you want. Okay. Tools. Now, you can get your Forster bits and get your an extension. And this will work. But if you get mass cut, these are have the bits and all the extensions all together. And then I've got it set up in a kit. It cuts better and it's easy to take apart. You don't have to unscrew, put all this together. All this fits with. It's got a number two bars tapers. They just fit in. You take a little wrench, break them apart, and they're off center. So we can use that. A round chuck, because you're turning, it's a different technique. This is one I use to start with. I've learned since. These are pin turners, chucks. They work great. We'll use that tonight. Put your paper, your pepper mills in different jars or sizes. I start out with jars of pepper packs to plastic. They all come in kits. Or you can buy them in bulk. If you buy them in bulk, a little bit cheaper. You usually buy 25, 50, then it's you know 10 cents, 20 cents off overall time. And if you're going to turn a lot of pepper mills, which I like to do, then it's better to buy it in the bulk. And you can do that in that end. Salt, again, I said it's got the acrylic because the salt will eat the metal. I started out putting all my stuff in the box and then Every time I wanted something, it was on the bottom of the box. So then I spread it, spread it out where I could reach in there and get what I want. Uh, the little bit 
I just made a top, just drill a little hole, put my bit in there. Everything I want is right there. This is just the mechanism from top to bottom. Get you a drill. I have a little Dremel and the lock come out of it. So this is just a permanent and I use it for just nothing but to drill. It's all in the kit. I just keep everything in a box. Again, gloves if you're using metal. And this is just showing the chucks on the, on the lathe. Come on. All right, we start out with 14 inches. Now, I'm going to use part of this as showing the, the aluminum, but the same principle applies with the other. X on the top. Come across on the bottom. Get your half inch, because you're going to sink half inch in your forcer a bit for the mechanism in the bottom, the grinding part. Nine and a half up is the top of your bottom. And then you go half the rest of it, mark out to the end a half of your threads. Now, if you're going to put a spigot on there, then you need to allow for that half inch spigot. So then you've got to add that on the other end. So that's all laid out is how you want to do your wood. Now, as you get your wood, look at it. See where your grain is. You've got false in it. You've got knots in it. Kind of line that up. Well, do I want that on top? Or do I want it on the bottom? Or do I want it at all? Chunk it and get you another block. And it's called, if you get started, and many times you'll find you're turning perfectly and all of a sudden there's a big fall. Or there's a big crack. Or there's a piece of bark inside the wood. Well, you can either try and keep it or figure out, hey, that's going to fall out. So you have to decide again, design. This is just cutting off the top. Now this, of course, is just putting in. This is do, doing the metal. And again, like I said, it was cold. So you got your jacket turning. This I'm turning it around. And you get part, just showing partly turning it. It's all the way around. Now you cut on each end. You want to square up your ends. Now this, I'm going to turn that. I'm not going to worry about putting a tendon on it. The other end, you got round, you just stick it in your round chuck. If you're doing that one, I'm going to show you a different technique tonight. But this is just drilling your mechanism in the bottom. That's the half inch. You stop. You put your one and a sixteenth in there, going halfway through. You turn it around. Now, I'm going to show you this afternoon. You turn it around and put it in the pin turning chuck. Expand it. And then on the other end, after you get it drilled, then you put your pointed design. You take your paper mill. I take my uh, three-pointed prong spout and turn and cut the little notches in there. Something else you can do, a lot of them take and turn with a little wire on their little dowels. You get your whole hacksaw, I mean blade, and just put your wire in there. That keeps your hands from reaching over the lathe and that gets yourself caught. This, you just put your hand on top, put a little pressure. It smokes real good. So, that's out of trouble, keep your hands away from it. Uh, turn it, make it whatever endowment and burnishments you want on it. Sand it. Now, this is the top. There's different things on top. When I first turned my pepper mills, it's fine, but the top, as you turned it, gapped. I kept waiting. He said, well, you're not holding your tool, parting tool square. Well, I said, yes, I am. I'm holding it straight up and down. He said, it's still not square. <laughs> okay. So I said, well, there's another mechanism that I figured out I would like to try because of that problem. And so... I turn instead of turning it flat like this. Also, I notice on that one that a little embellishment, instead of making your pepper mill and just putting the metal right on top of it, if you'll turn it like that one is and put your metal inside, then when you look at it, it looks it's just an aesthetic thing, but it looks much better. Then I turned it where the top of the pepper mill is inside here so that as you turn it, it doesn't make any difference. They don't see the gaps. 
So this is another way of just turning the top and getting it set up to where it's working the right direction. But turning it, drilling your hole all the way through, quarter inch, then turning out the bottom if you want to put your metal piece in the bottom, and that way it's hidden. And then I turn it off. This is that extra inch that I get on turning it on the end. So I turn it off, part it off on the end. And so I have a half inch. I think this is the pointer. Half inch right here. And that's because when I turn it around, I can put it into my chuck. And the chuck will hold it. Now this is not the jaws outside. It's the center hole in the chuck. It goes right in there perfect. And then that squares it up, and so then I can turn the top, and then I can sand it, and it's done. Tips. Across, if you can see right, well, there's a little red dot. It's going to work. There's a chuck. There's a bit with there. Can you think of the name of the uh, holder? There it is. Jacob's chuck. Well, on pulling it out, you hold the Jacob's chuck as you pull out. I was holding the tail stock, and I pulled that puppy dog right out. And all of a sudden, the Jacob's chuck was over yonder across the hall, across the shop. And there's the broken bit. And where's the other piece? It's in the top. And the top is no good. So, hold that chuck. Also, on the Jacob's Chuck, it's clockwise. I started off holding it, and I would turn it up, and the bit would come out and start turning in the wood. It's clockwise, so hold it down, and then you'll get it done grind. Again, a little mechanism. This is just an aluminum that you can get at Harbor Freight. It sits right on top of the lathe. I don't know if you all looked at this month's edition out, but the, they had an article in there of making it out of wood with just magnets and make it a little bit bigger. But everything I want is right there on top of my lathe, so I don't have to go get it. Putting that little piece in the pepper mill on the top, it would bind. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, we're done. Now, here... Bob will fix it for me, you know. What? Well, yeah, make it run. Here? That? That's a bug. <laughs> it's got a bug in it. <laughs> it's a computer. It's got a bug. Uh... I couldn't get, as I put a metal piece on there, it was a little bit off center, and it would bind the turning piece. And so again, I was over at Max's when he was doing the metal one, and I was telling him, he said, well, I'll show you a simple way. You put your metal piece on, and then you put your painter piece inverted through the top. Okay, move. Next. And then you can see, you can line it up, and it lines up with your metal rod. Next. And like I said, if you cut it off, you've got it too long, put it in your vise, saw it off, take your hammer, tap it, and that'll be your tip on those. That'll all do the slides. Okay, we're done with the slides. Let's make some sawdust chips. Sir. Yes. Uh, now, this is a set. It's called Max Cut uh, Cutter. And they come as a set. And uh, then we're going to use them and show you the, the different points on using it. Because when you put them together, well, let's just take the first one. We're going to make the first cut. This has got a little offset on it that you just wiggle it. It slides right in and locks. Then you turn. When you get done turning, you take your wrench. And you wiggle it just 
counterclockwise, take it out, and you put your second bit in. And then if you're going to make an extension, then you have to use your extension. But all I've got a Morris taper on the back to fit into your head tail your head stock. We'll. Uh, well, I got them out of uh, it. Back Packer, yeah. Yes. Well, oh, eight, nine, ten goes over there. Uh, okay. Uh, Packard, yes. Yeah. Hmm? It's Max Cut Colt C O L T Max Cut. So I just made this up, just carrot, so it's all there. I don't have to go back and find it. Every time you lay it on your lay, the lay's going to vibrate. You've got to pick it up out of the sawdust, or you'll get your magnet and find it in the sawdust. So I just put everything right there together. And I got all this for setting in on the end of it. On those tops, for the aesthetic point, you've got this curve on your top. It sets up on top. If you take in your other force bit and just then it just a little bit, this makes the top of your curve come right on through there. It's just a better look. So you, that's what this is for on these. Okay, let me get a wrap on. I had it somewhere. It's over here in the corner. Safety, shields, glasses. The first or about the third time I came to our club meeting, a lady had sent the club president a note, a letter. And her husband was a wood turner for years. And so she requested that all wood turners wear a mask because the autopsy on her husband showed that her his husband her husband's lungs was full of sawdust because he did not wear a mask. So from a safety standpoint, put something over your face. A mask, if you're doing anything with some of the woods that are exotic, you need to get a chemical mask. Uh, coca Bola, they tell me, burns. I haven't experienced it or I'm not buying that coca Bola. But uh, anyway, that's the safety. Some kind of goggles. Face shields. They got these. Uh, you can get these on the out of the catalog. Uh, most of the stores have them. Granger, you can get all this stuff at Granger. Get shields. You got Granger's got another one that comes out just like this, but you can get a plastic shield that goes over it to save this one piece. You just peel that plastic off, and put another one on. Face shields, masks, gloves, and watch two wrists. Remember always to turn first by hand before you turn it. Because sure enough, if you've got one little warp, it's going to hit on this. It'll snatch it off and you'll eat it. And we've got some of our safety engineers in our club that have marks on their heads. They've got dents. They've got stuff, fingers. And I'm going to give you a few tips as, on this as we go along. So let's see if we... Can you all hear me all right with this thing on? I'm going to wear it. Speed. If you turn this a little bit and you put your tool on it, that's what you're going to get bouncing while you're doing it. Get it up. Now this is not going to vibrate across the room, but I turn mine pretty heavy and pretty fast because it's smooth. Now I'm just using an Ellsworth modified a little bit deeper on the cut because I use it for everything so that I can get around the corners. The Ellsworth is not quite that deep. The tools that you're going to use is some kind of bowl gouge, a parting tool. You can use the quarter inch or the diamond. And then I have a finishing tool that we use. It's just a sharp point finishing tool. You can use a skew Instead of using a triangle piece to put in to, to different lines, you can do it with a skew. Uh, Mike, get with John, he'll show you how not to use it proper, or how to use it properly, not to use it. <laughs> All right, I've already turned this to kind of get some time down.
if you're cutting and you feel like, gosh, it's getting hard, go over to your grinder or get your diamond tool out. I carry it usually in my hip pocket and just hit it two or three times and you'll find out that in the morning it was nicer because your arms and fingers aren't tired. So just do that way. Let me see what we've got here. Okay, now, always they say turn off, and demonstrators don't do it, but I'm going to try to do it properly so they do it right. Move your tool rest with it off. Turn it back on. Square up the end. Put a tendon on this end. Use the chuck that I have. So I'm using the diameter of that for this relationship. Where is my mark? I have one that's got my mark on it. So I've got my half inch. My nine and a half. I'm going to give me another half inch, move up. Half of my threads is right there. This is going to be my spigot. Something else that you might want to know. If you mark it, reverse your engine. Is that reverse? Okay, your reverse is going this way. So as you put your pencil up here on the regular one, it wants to take your pencil down, and it'll break your lid every time. So reverse it, mark it, turn it on. It's going away from you. And we're done marking. Be sure to turn it back the other direction, because it won't... Part. Tinted on this end, this is going to be my top. Because I'm going to part this and off. A little tip I, I, I forgot my saw, but you got a Chinese draw saw. If you reverse it and just put your Chinese draw saw and hold it gently, you'll just saw it right in half without any ease. I forgot it, so we're going to part it off. Okay. I was fixing to say stop and back up your Yeah, that's that in that's this and this is my top. It's over here. Now instead of having the big one where I would have to change over, I'm just taking this off, sliding my tendon in for the top. That should level me up, but just to make sure. That looked like it's lined up pretty good.
you can turn it there, turn, or if you get a light pressure on your quill, you can spin that and it'll go back to the stops. All right, here we go. Now I have marked my half inch on my force and a bit. Uh, one and three, three eighths, I think. This one you can handle. The next one you don't touch because it's going to be hot. Now all of these already have wax on them. But as we turn, there we go. Turn in a little while and back up because if you don't, you're going to pack in enough chips that it's going to take and jam. And before I put it back in, just take a piece of wax, a honey, beeswax, or just wax, and wax that. It'll keep it from squealing and also from smoking and burning so bad. If you notice with the wax, you don't get all this squealing. If you don't put that on there, you will hear it. It'll vibrate your ears and it'll also smoke. Whoa, ball come off the head. the wrenches okay now where are we take your rod and stick it in measure I'm not quite halfway we can sneak in but I can get longer on the other end with a long extension fitting that in there because they're doing the same size on that end now then we turn around we change chucks Now we have our half inch and ditching in the end. We put that in. Lightly expand the chuck. Hold it. Take your center point. And then tighten it up the rest of the way. Now if you're using cedar, which I've been turning quite a few here lately in cedar, You've got to be careful. It splinters real bad. Just light, slightest amount of tension on that hole. So that's why I leave it to finish it after I've turned it. Okay, we're going to go back to the other side. It's uh, sycamore. Now, like I said, that's hot. 
So you have to handle it with both tools. Without. Now, if you get a 10 inch. No, I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. The wobbling, I'm not worried yet because I haven't turned the outside surface. Although it looked like I'm already off center. I had an extra piece, I thought, one that I had turned already around, but I didn't. Hmm? No, it was round, just, just one by itself. It didn't get in the box. Well, eight, nine, ten. Knock it off yet.
All right, we're going to play like this is on center. Now then, just turn our shape. ABC, anchor, bevel, cut. Get this thing back round. Also, it helps remember that this is the top and that's the bottom. If you turn it the other way around, then you <laughs> have a problem getting that top piece fit in that wide space on the bottom. So I know I want to leave about an inch or two on that end and curve in the middle and curve on the top. So I start at the top. Start in the middle. And then gradually build back to the top. So you have to remember you've got an inch and a sixteenth hole in the center. I took one that I was going to try and say, well, I want to leave about a quarter inch on each side. And so I just went down, took my parting tool, and I turned me down to an inch and three quarters. And then I started turning the top to match it out. And guess what? The tool hung, and it snapped the pepper mill right half in two. So I don't measure anymore. You just a little shear cut, shape it up. Start at the bottom, I want to have out a half inch or an inch on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put burn a couple of lines, two or three lines in there. Also helps you don't take too big a bite.
Okay, sir. Uh, speaking only turn it, it looks, to, to me, it looks slow. Okay, I'm oh, well, yeah. That could be faster. Yes, sir. No, I didn't turn it up. That's... It does make it nicer. Okay, we're going to say we're done. So I'm going to sand it. I'm just going to give it a quick cursor sanding. One other tip on your sanding is make you a little holder. And then the wife usually has this rubber mat that she puts in the cabinet for her dishes and poles. Uh, swipe some or go buy some so you don't get in trouble. And then cut you out some little strips about this long, which happens to be just about the width of a three-fold piece of paper, sandpaper. Fold it up, put a little CA glue on it, and it will keep your fingers from getting hot. So I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm just going to touch it up, and then we'll finish it out. Also, if you notice on mine, I've got down here on 400 and 600. Head stop. At four and six hundred, I reverse. But if you don't keep your tail stock up and reverse it, you're going to have everything off in your hand. So be sure if you're doing sanding, bring your tail stock up as you reverse. We'll go through. I'm just going to hit one twenty, a couple of eighties. Get my pad. One other point on your sandpaper. If you take your pan paper and cut it in half, then cut it in quarters, and then you'll take the quarters and you fold them over in thirds. Before you fold it, take your marks a lot and write 120, 180. Because what you're going to happen out is when you pick up a piece of paper, it's not going to have a thing on there telling you what grain. My fingers aren't educated yet enough to tell me what grain that is. So now I can just simply look and if it's in the wrong slot, somebody else used my sandbox, so I put it back in the wrong place because I don't do that. So it's got 120. So then you can use the sandpaper, and that keeps it all together. How are we doing on time? Anyone? Uh oh. So we're saying we're going to go 400. Now again, while you're sanding, either your mask and also have your dust collector going. Reverse it. Now remember, it's going the other direction, so you can't go under. You've got to go on top. So now this is my top 400. Leave it going the same direction. Get your six. Or some of you want to use your micro mesh going up 16,000 or 32,000, whatever you want. Then turn it back, and it's back to where you're on the normal cut. So if you happen to want to turn something, then you're back. Okay, I'm through. I'm going to finish this piece. Now your B. Because your grain's going one way, and if you'll notice when you're first starting on the other grain, it starts, it sands. Because you've bent all your fibers, or you're, you're, you're going long ways, and you've got that going one way. If you're coming back the other way, you find it, get the other grain coming this way, it's smoother. It's much, much smoother on that end of it. So, we're ready to finish this puppy dog. You get your bill system. You take your, get your rag. Now, if you've got your insurance paid up, your barrel plot gun, and everything else, you can get your rag. But if you pick up a rag like that, you will do one or two things. You'll amputate a finger, break an arm, or you get put in a box. So you won't, do not get anything. It's got even a piece of thread, 
A thread can wrap around that and take your finger off. The blink of an eye. So get your rag that you can use on finishing. Put on one of them on your lathe. Because I'm going to use paint. I'm going to put lacquer right on this finished product right here. And if you don't, it's going to spin and it's going to put that lacquer, nice coat, right on your top of your plate. So put something on top of that. Turn it down real slow. I'm just going to use a t-shirt. Turn it down slow. Start shake it up. And finish. Now, back to the side. You got a feel, shape feel. Face shield on. And you don't move over to the side, you're going to get speckles on it. So turn it up. It's going to spread that out even. What you ducking for, you, Glenn? You have another towel for me. Da -da. Uh, wad it up. Don't leave anything hanging out that can wrap. In fact, get a smaller piece. And you take and you burnish it all the way down. You still get it on there, move over, get a little bit more. What you're doing is heating it and seeding it at the same time in the wood. That's clean. Turn it back down. I do it three times. Step aside, turn it up. Catch it, Glenn. Now, I don't know whether the camera will pick it up or not, but as I move back and forth, you can see a line of the paint moving with it until it disappears. Then I know I've got most of it off, move over to a nice smooth place, go again. And on sanding, how long do you sand? Well, I sand with a 180 until it's, until it's smooth. Then all the other grains, I just go six times complete. One, two, and that's my sanding technique. Because otherwise you can sand for all day long. Right. Well, that's my three coats. Your bill system, you normally take this off and go over and you've got three different racks of, of your ro rollers. You put on each one. First is your Tripoli, di White Diamond, and your Carnuba. I don't take it over there. I leave it right here. So I take my Tripoli and I go down and back. Now, how many of you have wives that are quilters? If you do, or if you can find a lady friend that quilts, they use batting, which is inside of the quilt. It's cotton. And they throw it away. So, tell them, hey, save that for me. Cut you off a little piece, fold it up about four times. Hold it down at the bottom, go right along the bottom, and if you'll notice it moves with you, you've got that, turn it over, go back. Got a little bit more, turn it over. Got a little bit left, so I make I do it until there's not anything on my buffer. Alright? White diamond. Turn it outside, do the same thing. As you notice, each time you go, it gets shinier and shinier, and you keep working till you can't see that line move with you all the way through.
Take your card and over. Turn it wrong side out using a whole different area. Still got my little bitty line following me, or I'm following it. My top is finished. My bottom is finished. Other than for not being sanded real smooth, it's done. Now then, to get this to fit, you got to grind it down. So you just hold that down nice and easy. Take your Just, just snug. Don't want it because you don't want it squeaking while you're turning it, and you don't want, but you don't want it rattling side to side while you're doing it. So I just get it enough that I can get it in there nice and easy. Now then, I'm going to turn it to where I'm going to make the top fit over the bottom. So what I'm going to do is turn it down just a little bit, get my line marked on where I've got my pencil. tells me the top part of my pepper mill. That's my inside line as far as the top of this. So what I'm going to do is start turning it out. Not quite center. Well, Yep. 
Just a little more. Now I'm going to bring the top piece down toward meeting that. Looking for my Jacob's Chuck. It's not in there. Okay. Are you going to drill your hole next? <laughs> your Jacob's Chuck. When you bring your Jacob. I thought it was in there. I had it on the table. Okay. Okay, gonna finish turning the top. So I've got my bottom lined up with the top piece. I want just want to round this puppy dog off.
Now I do the same process here on the top. Got my hole drilled, sand it, finish it off, put the two together, and then hopefully when you get done that your pepper mill bottom, that you put your mechanism in, you can check it out. mechanism in, you can set that up there and see, okay, that's going to be pretty close because I'm just about that much on my threads on the inside that you can see down in the bottom. So that should fit if I had my holes drilled in the top. Uh, any comments or questions or anything I can try and answer other than uh, not having everything here? Wax hold up when you're using it on a regular basis. A Carnuba? I don't know. I had that eight years, I guess. Oh, it's hard. It's last. As far as I know it, I haven't had anyone complain about it not shining or the hand marks on it. Cause Carnuba is your car wax. And so it's it stays there. I mean, they put that thing on a car and it shines for, I don't know, forever. Not quite ever, but it shines for a long, long time. Yes? Hi. Uh, one and five eighths is the big one. One and one sixteenth is the other one. Test those up. I have it. I have it. And I've been turning them for, I guess, three or four years now. And that's the beauty of, of this uh, Max Cut Forstner bit. These things, uh, these uh, got this at Harbor Freight, so you know what that tells you automatically. None that I know of as far as reaction with the pepper, because you're putting pepper balls inside, and it it's fine. The only thing is that you got can't use your salt. Now, on these small ones, wherever they are, the little bitty ones, uh, some of them said on those, they like them for spices, to put their spices in. So they're using more for spices than for salt and pepper. But that has both of those, I mean, whether you use it for salt and pepper, uh, has the uh, ceramic mechanism in it so it doesn't make a difference what you put in them on those end of it and the uh, same finishes I do on those that I do here uh, it takes about an hour to do a little short one uh, depends on how much embellishment you want to put on it beads coals burning stuff in uh, probably two hours max after you get the techniques down and then the other thing that I was going to show you I didn't put in it but on the top uh, here, before I take it off, I put this in and indent this just enough that the, the top of the pepper mills, I think some of them it goes around there, you've seen how the top, it, it blends in smoothly. Instead of sitting up there like a knob, it blends in nice and smooth just with that this little indent. It's a quarter inch uh, fastener bit. And uh, it makes, it's just aesthetic. The same thing as the top. I mean, that mechanism, that turning mechanism is in the bo in the top. They're not going to see it. But when they take it off to put the pepper mill in, they're going to see it. And, oh yeah, that's a big old chunk of metal. But if you sink it down in that top, it's, it this looks a whole lot better. And, and if you can get these wives, women happy, your life is marvelous, you know. So, so that's, that's, a, that's a key there. Uh, any other question or anything I can help on? I'm sorry I didn't get everything done through all the way to, to showing you, but you've got the basic point of finishing it on the lathe, putting your top on, same thing here, finishing this on the lathe, uh, putting them together, it's done. Uh, instead of taking it off, going over to the Beal buffers, and doing all the Beal buffers, I have them sitting there, uh, and so uh, they're sitting there. I don't even use them anymore. Yes, Did you use your, your Dremel tool to drill the two holes in the bottom? Yes, sir. Uh, I have 
a little one and the, and the dremel. Uh, and I just set them down in there. Now the thing too on that that will help a little bit. Get them unwound. It's when you're drilling your holes with your mechanism. Which I just took off. Is in the top piece. Here. You've got your mech. Got it on inside. Is put your drill bit in there and then turn it on because you turn it on that's vibrating just just a little bit and it'll vibrate all around the next thing you know chow, now you have a nice mark on the outside of your top or your bottom so just set it in there of course on your top like he showed me you've got this already set down in there and you put it down you're holding it nice and steady and then you put that, I sit on my bench and just turn it on, make my holes. And then the screwdriver I have is magnetic because you've got to put your little fingers down in that hole. So you just take it, stick it on there. Now you just sit it down in there and turn it, and it goes nice and easy. Any other comments or questions that I can answer?